Welcome back. You know, one of my favorite parts of the show is interacting with all of you. We recently got a question on Facebook from Steve in Southeast Portland that relates to something that most people have to deal with, at least at some point or another. Installing a garage light? Let's take a look. Now, it's time for the Neighborhood Connection. All right, guys, we had a great question come in about a garage light, and not any garage light. You know, so many houses were built with just a couple screw in light bulbs and that was going to be good enough. But if you want to relight it and do something a little bit nicer, where do you go from there? Now, I don't recommend the adapters where you can plug in and put up another light. So I'm going to show you how to do this right today. So I ran down to my local home center, picked up one of these LED lights. And these are really cool because we can hardwire these things in. So all we're going to do here is jump in and take a look here. We've got our wires right here. We're going to swap that out with that today. And then we've got as well our hardware pack in here. And we're going to be able to screw this right up to the ceiling joist up there and have a nice tight fitting light. And I do like these because one, they give off great light. And two, they're not hanging down. So if you bump into it, it's not going to be bouncing around and knocking it off the ceiling. So this is going to be a more reliable way to go. So the first thing, we're going to turn off the power and then let's dive into this project. Should be an easy one. All right, guys, we got the power off, so I'm going to take this funky garage light out of here. Get that drop down. Our next thing we're going to do is we're going to take off this ceramic base. Now, this is one of the reasons I don't really like these with the with putting one of those adapters in here is there's no ground. And so that's just something that's not the safest, especially in a garage environment. So. All right, guys, another tip, always use insulated screwdrivers and tools. It's really simple when you're doing electrical. There's also these testers here that I can hit that. And we're good. If that had power on it, you'd be screaming at me. So now we know that that is good to go. Now I'm gonna hang the light up here next. I'm gonna find the ground wire up here though, because if you see, we didn't have a ground wire here. So up in this box someplace, is the ground that we're going to hook into. So we're going to hook into that ground and the one that's up there in the box right there. And that way we can make sure that this is going to be grounded correctly so we're 100% safe. So let's get the light fixture prepped so I can get it up here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to hang that. I'm going to put a bushing to put these wires through. So that way this hangs up there and we don't chafe that with the sheet metal from the light. All right, I'm gonna make this a little easy because that uh, ground wire is jammed up in the box and it's pretty short. So I'm gonna extend this out so we can get it up into the fixture. Since this was never really wired for that, I'm gonna get this up here. Get a nice good little twist on that. I'm gonna fold this all back up into the box so we can get everything connected back. All right, guys, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start these screws up here in this box since this has a twist to connect. I'm gonna get these things started because it's just like having an extra hand. If I can get these up here, this makes life a little bit easier. All right, guys, so I try to use the holes in the box and guess what? They give me this funky 45 degree angle, which I don't want in my garage. So I'm not gonna use those holes. I'm gonna spin it around here and bolt right up into the joist right here. It'll do the same thing, but sometimes it just doesn't work out right, depending on who put the box in. All right, I'm not a big fan of these connectors, so I'm gonna pull those off. There's better ones out there, and I think they're more reliable. So now what we're gonna do here is just hook up the wires. I'm gonna start here with our ground. All right, let's get the ground. That's coming out of the box above. That's our ground here. What I like about these is I can make sure that they're all the way in right there because I can visually see them. So I'm going to get those out of the way. Next, our white wire, which is our neutral. What's nice about this is this is a very energy efficient light, so it's going to use so much less energy than a standard light bulb. It should pay for itself pretty quickly. All right, I'm not the biggest fan of how these wires are up in here. This is how they have it on the light. That's how they say to do it. I'd much rather have those way up into the box, but they don't give you enough wires to do that. So I think that's a, maybe a tactical error on the light manufacturer, but that's just me. So now we're gonna put the cover up. Get that up in there on this side. 
And then this end is spring loaded. All right, let's turn some power back on it, see what happens and see how much light this thing puts out. All right, for about 35 bucks, it's not a bad way to go and it's gonna light your garage well. Just be real careful, follow the directions, make sure to turn off that power to keep it safe. We had a great question from Debbie in St. Helens about the right caulk to use around your bathtub. Debbie, I got a trick for you. All right, here's my favorite trick of all time and it has to do with silicone caulking. Here's the thing, silicone caulking is great for anywhere there's water, like around a tub, shower, you know, anywhere you're using tile, it's perfect for that. Just remember though, if you're using our project you're gonna paint, use latex because you can't really paint this stuff, you're gonna have a hot mess. So here's the thing, we're gonna go ahead and put a bead down here in the corner. And what I like to do is just get in here like this. Put a nice little bead in here. And then I'm gonna show you my trick. So I come in here like this, just lay a nice simple bead. I'm gonna release that so I don't have to clean that up later. Spray window cleaner, this is the answer right here. So I'm gonna cover my hands. I'm gonna cover that, because I'm gonna get it on there. And then I'm gonna come across here. This is a surfactant. That means that stuff's not gonna stick to this. And when this cleans off, it's gonna be, well, like glass, so it's clean. So then I'm just gonna come across here. There we go, and I got a lot of it right here. This stuff comes off so easy. That is so much easier to work with with silicone caulking and I love it. All right, that is my trick to doing silicone caulking. It's gonna be so much easier than latex and it's gonna last a lot longer anywhere around water.